Hello everybody, my name is Speech from Arrested Development. I wanted to talk to you about um, various conspiracies that really aren't so secretive. Um, many people know about them, but the conspiracies that have been talked about, or quote unquote conspiracies, is really about how the CIA um, has been involved and our government has been involved with pumping drugs into various minority communities, black community, Latino communities, um, to the Crips and Bloods. These monies that have come from these drugs have been used to um, fund various cartels, drug cartels, um, various uh, conspiracies about how the United States government is very much involved with the drug trade and making money from these things. All of these things could be found easily online. It's not just a conspiracy. It's actually pretty much common knowledge for people that research these things um, so um, I wanted to talk about how that relates to us as a people as, as black people um, so many of our intellectuals talk about how you know when we sell drugs when we sell them to one another uh, to each other when we make our money from it that it's a bad thing but they quickly curtail that bad thing and say but we are the victims um, that white people have set up um, the socialization they have set up the scenarios to where we fall into this trap and we therefore aren't to blame um, primarily that they are to blame and that we don't have uh, Dr. Umar Johnson just spoke about uh, in one of his speeches I was checking out online was talking about how we don't um, pay for the, the huge jail systems that are out there and we don't pay for the drugs being brought here and being pumped into the communities and so therefore we're not um, the main problem uh, even on a Dead Prez album and I love Dead Prez I love Dr. Umar Johnson and, and a lot of what he says too by the way but even in one of their earliest records Let's Get Free um, it talked about this whole wolf scenario on a knife and it was talking about how you know you, you can't blame the wolf for um, licking the blood that's on a knife and you have to instead blame the hunter and I just want to talk about this whole concept that um, despite the truth of conspiracies or um, plans that have been set into motion back in these days in the 80s but also even today that despite these things happening um, that we are not responsible for our own directions. I'm very big on self-determination. And so I want to contest that. And I want to talk about how forevermore there will be evil forces that would like to see the demise of someone else. And in our situation, there will be evil forces that would love to see the demise of us as a people. But the more that we continue to blame others, not suggesting that they are not to blame, they are to blame, but the more that we continue to blame others and use that as the main catalyst to change our condition, the worse off we will be. Because even when we expose evil deeds, which usually takes 10 to 20 years to expose evil deeds, even when we do expose it, it rarely changes our condition because only us have the ability to change our condition. And so I want to encourage all of us to talk more about what we can do to avoid the traps that have been set for us. See, the Bible talks a lot about how Satan has various traps, whether it be women, whether it be various vices, which women could be a vice, but drugs, uh, various things that we use to escape, whether it be spending too much money, overeating, you name it. It's so many things that are vices in this world. But God teaches us to strive to avoid the vices. Let that be the focus. And um, instead of blaming those that have set the vice, God will judge those who set the vices up. The Bible talks about how um, if someone causes another person to sin God himself will punish that person Jesus talks about it's better for that person to tie a noose um, a, a, a huge millstone around their neck and drop them into the, the water because that's the punishment that God has for those that cause other people to sin so there is judgment for that 
but I want to talk about our moral compass to say where we do have control is the choices that we make some people will say that I'm allowing other people off the hook I'm not at all as I just said a moment ago God is the judge for these things and he will judge and he may use men to judge but meanwhile we have choices in our life our life is so precious it's so important that if we wait for our justice to come by seeing other people um, be punished for what they've done or just waiting for um, us to further expose the evils that have that have um, came upon us if that's our sense of justice and our only sense of justice I should say then we really are taking for granted the powerful life that we are meant to live we're spiritual beings first and foremost before we're black white Asian Latin Indian or anything else we're spiritual beings and God himself has an amazing spiritual purpose for our life here on earth so I want to encourage those of us that are activists those of us that are spiritual people to speak more about how we can avoid the traps in the first place instead of focusing so much of our energy on exposing the traps that are there there will always be traps there will always be evil on this planet we will never eradicate that what we can do is learn how to navigate this world that has evil learn how to navigate it to where we are not affected by it to the extent that those that are evil want us to be affected by it so I want to encourage us as black men as black women to avoid these various traps avoid the trap of drugs um, selling drugs avoid the trap of crime of committing these crimes it's so prevalent now within hip-hop music within um, even the intellectuals black intellectuals that speak to us about our issues it's so prevalent for them to speak consistently about what others are doing to us but not speak about our moral responsibility morality is not just a spiritual or religious thing it is a navigational tool that can help us to get through the many minds, bombs, traps that all of us can fall into. So I'd like to encourage us to use our morality for those of us that are Christians to use our spirituality and speak wisdom to the masses of people that are around us masses whether it be three or four people that are around us or hundreds or thousands or millions whatever our platform is um, the Bible says that we, wisdom speaks loud from the corners and so wisdom is there God has not left us I keep hearing in hip hop how God uh, you know I wish God was here with us right now or where is God when I need him or where is you know what's up God I'm here in this horrible situation and God is saying no wisdom is right here and she's speaking loudly on the corner but you have to listen to her in order to allow her wisdom to change your path in life and when you do listen to her it will set you free you know the Bible says that um, when you obey what God is teaching us and what Jesus teaches then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free so there's a there's a process to understanding real freedom people will talk a lot about other things but I don't want to um, allow that smoke and mirrors to mess with us the truth is there's a process to freedom and one is to follow God understand what he actually tells you and follow that then you'll know the truth that's number two and the truth will set you free this is speech um, a lot more to say about these things um, I'm a big advocate of great music and great entertainment and I've been in the hip-hop world forever and uh, feels like forever for a long time and I hear a lot of concepts and philosophies that are being preached without any counter um, anyone to counteract those opinions and those viewpoints and so a lot of what I speak on is to counteract what I hear so prevalently 
throughout our pop culture means of media uh, means of hip hop or television and so on and so forth. I love y'all. Peace.